turn the car around and don't go anywhere. Cheers. Good to see you again. Thank you. Cheers. That looks wonderful. Is there any mustard at all? I'll see. First taker for my latest creation. Still well. Good of you to come in at such short notice. Ah, here's Mr. Quick, Alex's housemaster. Ronald Quick, Colin Stillwell. <coughs> You'll have heard me talk about open door before, Commander. Here at Hatterley, we really have flung open the doors. And I don't just mean broadening our customer base. Open door also means no secrets. A problem's a problem. Let's face it together. Parents, teachers and pupils. I have heard you before, yes. Right. Nitty-gritty, then. Alex went to see the nurse about ten days ago. The little chap was feeling a bit emotional, I think. I've got four minutes. Since then, I have noticed... And when I say noticed, I am talking about a headmaster's eye. The point, please. Um, there have been a couple of regrettable incidents, sir. Alex got a black eye as a result of a kerfuffle with some town boys in Barstock, then uh, possibly the same boys, one Barstock boot boy looks much like another, I suppose, made an incursion into the school premises, and um, Alex was unlucky enough to... Uh... Some Barstock boys got into the school and assaulted my son. Shall I send for Alex, Mr Silwell? Then you can get the story from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Well, that's not convenient. We were hoping you might help us review school security in the light of... It's in hand. You're very slow, Alex. Around here... You've got to be quick, really, if you want to survive. Quicker than that. <laughs> this mustard. Is there a problem with it? Did you make it here? Uh, he created it. I want it. What's the boiling point of nitrogen, Martin? 196. Call it 200, shall we? Nice round number. I was actually here to sample the pies. I'd had reports that they were very good, which they are. But they're eclipsed by this mustard. Well, I was hoping that the mustard would complement the flavour of the... A lot of new mustards are either stupidly hot or they're not really mustards at all, just concoctions of fashionable ingredients. Yours finds just the right balance. It's powerful, but it's also very subtle. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I'm making such a fuss about this. Catherine Flynn. Oh. I'm one of the directors of the Rustic Relishes range, introducing people to authentic tastes their grandparents would have taken for granted. You're interested in marks in my mustard? I'd like to bring one of our specialist tasters along for lunch tomorrow. By all means. I could take a dollop of mustard to him, but... At Rustic, we believe that the ambiance of the place and the personality of the maker have a big part to play in the experience. Oh, it sounds great. It is great. Freddy! Ask yourselves this. Does it really need these extra man arms. Hatterley College. What about it? They've got gangs of Barstock thugs running amok on the premises. Have they? One of them beat up my son. Oh, 
I'm known as a big hitter in the underworld. I wouldn't put it past some of these lowlifes to think they could get back at me through my boy. That's terrible. You're right. So sort it out. Why are you asking me? I should have thought that was obvious. And if it doesn't require that many man hours, what are the use? Come. Hmm. Hatterley College, Crab. They're having a few problems. Are they really, sir? Rucks into the town yobbos. Some of them even had the nerve to go up there and make trouble inside the grounds. Crumbs. Well, let's hope they use the tradesman's entrance, sir. Commander Stilwell. He's on Sir Colman in crime consultancy. I sent his son up there and he's not very happy about all this. In fact, his son seems to have been something of a target. Is Mr Stilwell concerned about a vendetta against himself, sir? What I want you to do is to get the public duty squad in, review security and check all this out at the same time. Right. Diplomatically. Naturally. And, Crab, there is one other thing. Sir? Make no mention of me. You know, you could send this lot through prison for what it costs to keep him here. Do your best to keep your envy in check, Ed. It's not envy. It's just righteous indignation. Now, now, children, stop squabbling. Ah, you must be the police officers. Yes, sir, Detective Inspector Crabb. This is Constable Morton, Constable Guthrie. Duncan Berridge, headmaster. Alex's housemaster, Ronald Quick, is expecting you. He'll be in Kipling House. Just ask one of the boys. Very good, sir. You'll find all doors open to you. Open doors, the policy, in this as in everything. And uh, don't mince words with your report. School security is paramount here. Thank you, sir. And all these open doors, no wonder they've got a security problem. Alex had a run-in in Barstock with one or two of the more bone-headed of its citizens. Thank you. And a few days later, some of them were up here, and uh, they picked on him again. Two sugars, please. Um, if Alex could give us a few details about his attackers, I think we may be able to identify them. As to the uh, security, well, the constables here could take a look around the grounds and make some notes. I'll find you a guide. Thank you. Benjamin, got a job for you. Do you recognize any retackers from the pictures? This is embarrassing. What do you mean, embarrassing? The fuss. Oh, now, Alex, I mean, wouldn't you expect people to make a fuss about an assault? If I'd known how much fuss they were going to make, I probably wouldn't have gone to the nurse. Well, did you tell your father you didn't want any fuss? I haven't spoken to him. Well, I, I, I thought he'd been here. He has, but I was sitting a history test. They told him he couldn't see me. He was pretty knocked about that, actually. Hmm. Well, is there anything you could tell me about your attackers? I mean, did you have the impression they were local lads? They were Barstock boys, I said. Not Hatters. Hatters? What's that? Hatterley College boys. Hatters. Oh. 
Your father thought that maybe somebody he'd crossed swords with before was trying to get at him through you, you know, criminals. Will you be seeing him? Oh, I might. Tell him not to worry about that. I wouldn't let him down. I used to get bullied myself. You do if you're a bit of a boffin or your teeth are crooked or whatever. You've just got to tough it out, really. And Alex is new, so... Yeah, but the boys that picked on Alex were from Barstock, weren't they? Not the school. They were, yeah, but same principle. The necromancer. Sorry? School cook, Mrs Wisham. Food's that bad, is it? Oh, and if you remember anything else, let me know, won't you? Bye, Alex. It's a shame, doesn't it? I'm sorry? Freddy Fisher? Well, I, I didn't know he was a pupil here. Do, do you remember him? He's ashamed, so he sent you instead of coming himself. <laughs> What's he got to be ashamed of? I'm a cook. You're the detective. What do you suggest, then? Well, close them down, of course. Put the money into the state system. What, turn out Einsteins like you? Yeah, well, better than weirdos like that lot. It's not a place at ease with itself, is it? Most of these minor public schools are trying desperately to get themselves seen to become market-friendly. I don't suppose that goes down well in all quarters. Don't suppose it goes down too well with old Quickie, I'd say. Two sugars, please. Just give us a minute. Right, lads. We're here to review our security, not trample it down. We've all been more than cooperative with the charade. Now I think it's time you slipped off whence you came. Yeah, the lad ran in here. A lot of lads run in here. They live here. It's a boarding school. Well, I'd like to uh, have a word with him and ask him what he was up to. Just because you spend your miserable life patrolling a fly-blown sinkhole like Barstock doesn't mean that you can act the same way up here. We're not chasing glue snippers around a council estate now, you know. Oh, no, no, this is uh, completely different, isn't it? I think you know your powers, Constable. 
and I certainly know my rights. One can take the open door principle too far. Was there, don't you? Well, would either of you like to tell me? Dean Hazelwood, from the fly blown sinkhole three miles that way. Mm. Well, what was he doing here upsetting his betters? Mm. NRH, where'd you get them? His customer dropped them. You didn't arrest him? Oh, I couldn't do that, sir. We hadn't been introduced. Just one more signature. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Not at all, Mr. Crab. Perfect timing. Rustic relishes are taking Gary's gourmet mustard. Congratulations. A little bit more thought may have to go into that name, but uh, a check for 500 smackers as a gesture of the company's goodwill. Just need to iron out a couple of things with the recipe, and that's that. I thought the recipe was tried and tested. Now they're going to double check the availability of some of this. To a mutually profitable partnership. To, to a, a mutually, mutually profitable, profitable partnership. partnership. Cheers. 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 Lab report? MDMA. Ecstasy sound. Very pure. These letters. NRH. The lab had never seen them before. And you say the housemaster was obstructive? Mr Quick, he wouldn't allow Guthrie to talk to the lad in question. Quick? Hmm. Ronald Quick, sir. The housemaster. He doesn't seem keen on strangers in general. This isn't good, Crab. All I wanted was a swift review of security to keep Commander Stillwell happy. Sir, ecstasy is a Class A drug. I should have thought the headmaster would want to know if it was getting into the school. Look, it's the dealer we're after, Crab. We all know there's no mileage in chasing the end user. Would we be following the same approach if this was Barstock Comprehensive, sir? The dealer, Crab! Yes, well, I think we know who he is. A young man by the name of Dean Hazelwood. And get after him. You know, it'd be a lot easier to get that little hatter to name Hazelwood. Yes, well, those are not our instructions, I'm afraid. Yeah, but Dean's not going to come clean himself, is he? I mean, we've got no evidence. Well, he's got his honour as a gentleman at stake, don't forget. Mm. Well... I think I'm going to go around the back in case he legs it before that occurs to him. Fine. He's right, you know, sir. We are going to need corroboration from the Hatterley boy. One thing at a time, eh? It's your brother there, Nick. Would I know? Tell him we'll be back with a warrant. Not the most brotherly of brothers, the Hazelwood boys, are they? must be quite concerned at the possibility of drug-taking going on in the house. I'm not at all concerned, because it's not going on. The constable did get quite a good look at the youngster in question, feel sure he'd recognise him again. If we could just have a few words with this lad, we'd get hard evidence against the suppliers. By the way, that uniformed barbarian threw himself against my door. I'd say it was more than just a few words he was after. Yes, all, all right. I'll admit that he was a little overzealous, but the boy did run away when approached. Why wouldn't you run away? A thug like that was chasing you? Mr Quick, we can get a warrant if we need to. I'm simply trying to approach this problem in a way that would cause the least disruption. I'm not having a constabulary mob turning my house over. I haven't even heard proof positive that the boy was a hatter. 
But he was wearing the uniform. Freddy Fisher put you up to this, didn't he? What makes you say that? He did, didn't he? As a matter of fact, it was Commander Stilwell that asked us to make sure the security at the school was up to scratch in view of the attacks against his son. He couldn't accept it at the time, and he can't accept it now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry uh, who couldn't accept what? Getting thrown out of here. Freddy Fisher. You can tell him from me he's not getting back in. Bully boy tactics weren't acceptable then, and they're not going to work now either. The likes of Freddy Fisher, you see, just aren't cut out for a school like this. So much for softly, softly. Oh, for goodness sake, how much jam are you putting on there? You've got teeth to drop out. You don't want to go in there, sir. Don't I? She um, might turn you into something. I'll bear that in mind. Um, Benjamin. Benjamin. You're the uh, inspector, aren't you, sir? Yes. Is, is there something you want to tell me, Benjamin? Maybe, sir. In the quad, half an hour, all right? Right. Vinnie, get that custard on the go. Hello. Oh, thought you'd find your way here soon enough. Do you know, I don't think I've ever seen quite so many baked beans before. Your operation's pretty small scale, I hear. <laughs> I'll say. Do you know, I think you get the whole of my kitchen inside that one pot. <laughs> Three sittings, 300 days a year, plus functions, sports days, summer schools. You need a good big pot. Ah. Um... If you don't mind, I, I was wondering if we could have a word about Freddy Fisher. Hmm. He was a quiet boy, was Freddy. Used to visit the kitchen quite a lot. I was only a washer up then, and uh, he used to come and chat. Helping, he called it. Missing his mum was what it was, I thought. Yeah, this kitchen was like a haven for him. A haven? Mm. Haven from what? Well, I got the mick taking a fair bit for being, you know, he's not exactly landed gentry, is he? Mm. And uh, didn't he talk the way most of them talk? I think he settled in in the end. Model pupil, I suppose. Got expelled for fighting. What? Just for fighting? Split a boy's forehead clean open here to here. Oh, he should have seen the blood. Just out there on the steps. I thought you said he was a quiet boy. Pushed too far. Quiet ones are like that, aren't they? They just snap. Who or what pushed him? Bullying. There was one boy especially. We made little Freddy's life a bit of a misery. Is this, is this the boy he attacked? The headmaster saw it, and Freddy wouldn't give his side of the story because that would have meant telling on another boy. Did you say anything? I was just a washer up. Where's the crab got to? Could you put that warrant down, please? You're making it all tatty. You know what we should do is go back to the school, right, get the lot of them out into the playground. Soon spot the little scrot then. The little scrot is probably the future home secretary. Yeah, well, probably all the more reason then. He was the main one. You sure? I am, yeah. He was there. But you don't recognise any of the other attackers? Sorry. I wish you'd told me this sooner, Benjamin. They were a bit... I was a bit frightened, really. I know. 
Here comes Nick Hazelwood. Still waiting for my little brother. We just like sitting here. We like the tranquil location. Well, don't let me tell you your job. But he's not going to come strolling along with you two here, is he? Oh, what should we do then, Nick? Pick you up instead? I'm a good boy these days. I heard you were in court two weeks ago. Misunderstanding. Was that Nick Hazelwood? Yes, sir. Pick him up. What about the warrant? Later. I've never been to Hatley College in my life. Our witness saw you take part in the assault. Who's the witness? Oh, no, come on, you know I can't tell you that. You've waited so long for my brother, you've decided to go for the next best thing. Correction, I'm not next best. He is. You and Dean not getting on so well, then? No comment. Has he picked up some of your business acumen and turned it against you, then? Dean couldn't pick up a pint of lager. He's got a very nice car, Nick. He's been doing a bit of business up at Hatterley College, hasn't he? You want to talk to Dean? Get him in here. Good idea. Could you tell us where we could find him? Two weeks ago you were talking about this uh, attack on the Attlee kid. Yeah, well, it was about then. And what was the exact date? The 12th. She knows where I was on the 12th and so does he. I'm doing your job for you here. I was in court. Acquitted, and I was on remand for the three weeks beforehand, too. He's right. <laughs> Nick Hazelwood, not guilty. What's your middle name, Nick? Richard, why? And your initials would be? NRH. What's that got to do with anything? Well, it's just that these tablets were found at Hatterley College... Imprinted with the letters N-R-H. Oh, no way, no way! If I was knocking these out, I wouldn't put my initials on them, would I? Still, it's just a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? N-R-H, it could be anything. It's not, though, is it, Nick? It's your initials. <laughs> yeah, and what, my telephone number's on the back for customer service? No, that would be stupid. This is stupid! I'm not going to put my name on something like that, am I? Henry Crabs, Oldie Worldie, Chop House Mustard. They didn't think that Gary's gourmet mustard pushed the right buttons? No, well, that's as maybe. But it's not Henry Crabs, it's not Oldie Worldie, and it's not Chop House Mustard, is it? I just said I'd ask you, that's all. Well, you've done that. Is that a no, then, is it? Yes, it is a no. And maybe we could discuss the problem with the Belgian beer. Oh, don't tell me. They'll be using a tin shandy from the corner shop. Uh, we were suggesting using one of the premier English ales made by a sister company. Sister? Hmm. And who might be the mother company of these sisters? Jallop and Ringmer International. But we keep them entirely at arm's length. Jallop and Ringmer? International? Morning, sir. Crab. I uh, just thought I'd catch you early. Problems with the case? Uh, several, sir. One of them rather delicate. What, sir? You, sir. Ronald Quick thought I'd put you up to it, huh? Yes, sir. He seems to think this entire investigation is an attempt on your part to disrupt the orderly running of his house. Now, one of the boys has made a false accusation against a man called Nick Hazelwood. His brother, I think, is the drug dealer we're after. The problem is, I need to interview that boy, but I'm sure Quick will do his best to block it. So, before any first starts flying, I wondered if you could assure him that this is a serious investigation involving Class A drugs rather than some sort of vendetta on your part. Did he say why he thought I'd put you up to it? 
Yes, sir, he did. What did he say exactly? That you'd been expelled. That you'd never accepted it. That this whole thing is an attempt on your part to get your own back. What else? That you'd had a fight, split up on a boy's forehead at school, right in front of the headmaster. Mind you, I also heard this boy was a bully who'd been making your life a misery. Well, it's all water under the bridge now. But I don't understand why you just didn't give the headmaster your side of the story at the time. That would have been breaking the unofficial code. And what's that? Never rat on a hatter. Never tell on a fellow pupil. Yeah, I'll tell you what NRH stands for, never I Hazelwood. Have you searched the house? <laughs> Nick the wrong Hazelwood. Yeah, wrong's not spelt with an R, Nick. Come on, come on. Never rat on a hatter, that's what it means. It's what they call the unofficial code up there. So is it uh, back to the school then, sir? Well, let's wait a moment. Nick might be just angry enough to want to go and pay a visit on his little brother. Follow him, sir. You know, I think we might all be going to the same place. Drop me at the gate and then stay with him. They're making drugs in the school, Alex, aren't they? You got wind of something. They thought you were talking to your father. That's why they attacked you, wasn't it? I'm not talking to you. Oh, no. The unofficial code. Yeah. They're selling tablets to Dean Hazelwood, aren't they? That's what P.C. Guthrie saw when he chased that boy to the school. I don't know. Don't know anything. Look, I'm sick of covering up, you all right? No, you're sorry, Nicky. You've My never been trusted. You've One got a mouth too You just shut your mouth! All right, come on. Come on. No, no, chaps. Queensbury rules, you know, not in the pop car park now. So whose idea was it to put NRH on those tablets? Killed two birds with one stone there. Throw suspicion onto Dean Hazelwood's brother Nick, and at the same time warn you Hatterley boys not to speak out. Clever. So who's making the tablets, Alex? And why do you suppose your friend Benjamin told me he saw Dean Hazelwood's brother, Nick, assaulting you on a day when we know Nick Hazelwood was in police custody? Is it because Benjamin is the one who's making the tablets? I'm not saying anything. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, anything you may later rely on in court. So you've turned grass. Sunk to it now, ain't you, pal? That's the end for you, that is. Looking for your housemaster. Mr. Quick, he's in the gym, sir. Thanks. Did you, um, catch the man, sir, the one in the picture? 
We did, Benjamin, thank you. As a matter of fact, we've just about got the whole case wrapped up. I'm uh, glad I could be of help. Thanks a lot. Bye. I'd like to have a word with you about those tablets, Mr. Quick. We had a word. Yesterday. A different word. Three different words. to see what I can tell you, other than what I told you yesterday. Some new information has come to light about those uh, tablets. Well, I very much doubt if... Uh... Are you familiar with the term unofficial code? Never rat on a hatter. That's it. It was you... What was me? You're an old boy of this place, aren't you? It was you that made Freddy Fisher's life such a misery. <sighs> I'm afraid you've been misinformed. It was Freddy Fisher who knocked me over. Sir, call from HQ. Alex is there making a bit of a scene. <sighs> Right. Make sure that nobody goes near Benjamin Oates's tuck box. Nobody, right? Get someone to fetch the headmaster. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, Gary, you're naming lights. Darth Palmer. Small concession, Gary, in the interest of positioning the product within the range. But I thought you wanted to reflect the personality and the ambience of the maker. Oh, well, that's recognisably you. Open it, then. It's meant to be green and grainy. It does have grains and it does have a greenish tinge. It's just not as green or as grainy as the draft recipe. Draft recipe? Is that the one he spent a fortnight perfecting? Sally. I would ask you to withhold your judgment until you've tasted it. My company has founded its reputation on products such as this. Most young chefs would give their eye teeth to be associated with us. Right, now, if you'll just sign here and here, I can authorise this cheque for £1,200. Has it actually got a taste? It's 11.45. I'll be back at 8. I expect to see your signature on that paper. He's barricaded himself inside an office. So he isn't coming out until this whole hatterly thing is dropped. Has his father spoken to him yet? I interrupted his seminar to inform him. He asked me to deal with it. This is acutely embarrassing for me, Crab. I asked you for an arm's length operation. Still will blames me, of course. But Alex knows about this drugs business. He's just not prepared to say what. It's because he's being bullied into silence. Alex, can you hear me? Dad? Uh, it's Inspector Crab, Alex. Sir, do you do Thank you. Look, uh, Alex, I'm prepared to call off this whole operation if you just promise me one thing. This whole thing's got out of hand. 14 year olds holding a police station to ransom. That's just a question of opening up channels of communication, sir. That's uh, between Stillwell and his son. Yeah, but it's not just them, though, is it, sir? Alex, this gentleman is Assistant Chief Constable Fisher. He's the man I told you about who went to your school. Alex wants to hear what you've got to say to him about the unofficial code.
someone must have put them there. I'm sure the boy doesn't know anything about this. I think you're going to have to do a bit better than that. Don't you, Benjamin? Crab. Alex has got some things he wants to tell you. The first time was in Barstock, thanks. Saw a hatter getting a hard time from Dean Hazelwood. I told him to leave him alone and he hit me in the face. Um, Dean hit you. But the hatter. It was one Constable Guthrie chased the other day. He was glad I'd helped him. He started shooting his mouth off a bit on the way back to school. Said a bit too much, I think. About making drugs in the school? Benjamin found out that our lab technician had been sacked from his last school for possessing cannabis. Benjamin told the lab tech that he'd keep it quiet if he... If he helped Benjamin prepare these tablets? When Benjamin found out that I knew about it, he got Dean Hazelwood to have another go at me. I wasn't going to tell anyone anyway. Then when my dad came to the school and you turned up, everyone thought I'd been squealing. But I hadn't. You know, Benjamin told me he saw Dean Hazelwood's brother attack you. Wasn't true, was it? The Hazelwoods are sort of rivals. They both sell drugs. Benjamin was trying to get the other brother in trouble. To, to deflect attention away from himself. You know, you've done the right thing here, Alex. It wasn't right what happened to ACC Fisher. No, it wasn't. I'm, I'm really sorry for all the trouble I've caused. When I was in that office, I was really thinking that maybe my dad would... Come and talk me out of it. He's not very big on communication, your dad, is he? He was the youngest commander appointed since the war. Did you know that? No, no, I didn't. Mr Quick had no idea any of this was going on, did he? Yes? Mr Fisher wants you both up at the school. Ah. The big guns are waiting for you. Right. I think you all know each other. Do we really need the boy here? I don't think this would have come to light without him. We uh, found the tablets where you suggested, sir. Basically, Benjamin denies any knowledge of them. He's telling the truth. The headmaster has acknowledged that the tablets were being manufactured in the school. I've said that's the way it looks, with the lab technician disappearing and so on. We think the lab technician is part of a much wider scheme centred on Benjamin Oates. Look, I'm sure there are going to be all sorts of complications and ins and outs. What I'm here to put to you is that you allow us to deal with this ourselves. As far as we're concerned, it's an internal disciplinary matter, and no-one's interest will be served by outside agencies tramping in. You know what the reputation of the school means. You know how we've always done things. I say this as one old boy to another. Think what the school's done for you. Let us deal with it in our own way. I think it should all be brought out into the open. You do, do you? You jumped-up little shopkeeper's son. Can't wait, can you? Can't wait to drag Hatterley down into the swill of mediocrity that surrounds it. It's already there. It's already there. Go! 
Stanley, for heaven's sake. Don't make up your mind one way or the other, but please get on with your job. Do we have a decision? You can have it, Bach. It's your mustard, not mine. Think very carefully. Jalop and Ringma have a lot of influence in this business. Influence? They've influenced all the taste out of my mustard. And there may be legal implications to consider. Well, why don't you consider them, Catherine? I've got a job to do. You'll regret this. I don't think so. I'll make it my business. Right. That's it. Take your contract, take your mustard, and take your mutton chop whiskers. You know, that woman is a bully. Feeling better? Yeah. Good. Now, let's get cooking. <laughs> 